Welcome to this uh, video academy. In this academy, I'll show, teach you how you can use VGAF EAT integration regression tool for testing your uh, SAP PI PO interfaces. In this first series or the first video, we'll cover how you get all the different components installed, and then later we'll look at uh, collecting and processing tests. So. The, I think the, the biggest thing for, for you is to, to get a proof of concept done that you can see, okay, this is how it works, this is what works in my scenario, and this is what not works. And the best way to do that is to, to follow this uh, quick start. So you want to deploy the agent on your test or develop, uh, development or sandbox systems. Uh, whichever you have, that is the easiest to, to access and you can uh, leverage uh, and so, uh, yeah, deployment and user access is the two key components. And then it's really good if you also got some uh, PI scenarios that you can use and there's test data coming through or you can invoke test data on it. Then you want to start uh, the testing application. You want to do the configuration as we're doing in this one. Uh, start collecting test data from the development system and then just run them on development system. That's the, the easiest approach and figure out what the tool can do and if it will work in your scenarios. So if you want to get the, the software the, and you haven't got it yet, then go to figaf.com uh, slash IRT, then you sign up and then you'll get an email with uh, a login to, to Simplier where I have all the, the information stored and you'll receive a login with by email so you can uh, access it in that way. Um, so an agent is all the PI systems in your landscape and when I say agent it's a small component that we install on your these uh, PI systems that then interact with the testing application. Uh, we used to have a testing application you only need to, to install it on the PI system, but now it's a standalone application that runs embedded on your local PC or, or a, a server. Um, but the agent is a small HDA that contains the most important features for running these tests so that, uh, and, and extracting payload. So that is uh, this uh, module that we're adding some some web services that we're using for for fetching messages and and DMS uh, information. So the way you install it is you install the agent on the uh, uh, deploy the SCA on your PI systems that you want to have uh, testing with or collecting data from. Uh, you can use NetViva Developer Studio or. Uh, CTS or whatever you or some whatever you apply uh, normally use for uh, deploying uh, SCA files. Um, then you create a new user called IRT agent that has the following roles, um, and you just do that in the the user management in in the the quick start guide there's also a, a script that you can call to to create this if you have uh, user access and then you want must set the the ERT agent as technical users as technical user otherwise you would probably end up uh, or run into some problem once this password has expired or uh, needs to be changed uh, so it's easier just to set it as a technical user Um, we want to do securing of uh, these services, so when we're deploying this, we don't have any information about how we can deploy this and secure this. Um, so that is the, the only option that you have. Uh, so open that Viva Administrator, uh, so uh, a single service application, search for ERT and go on, let me just show you that. So we will go to our PI system and we've administrate on it. Normally I'll just search for single service, single service definitions, ERT, 
and then we got these three then we go into our Vistal uh, configuration uh, if this one is not here we will say new just create it and then we'll go to the edit part of this in the security setting and here we will set this uh, password um, that way the password is required and they all and nobody else would be able to to leverage this so that's that then we want to deploy the testing system and we got a, a few options here um, they so the, the standalone application is just a jar that contains a Tomcat and everything you need uh, and database, everything you need to, to run this. So for proof of concept, this is the best approach to figure out if the, the system uh, behave as you want to do. Um, you can also, or we will be providing a library that you will be able to install on your Tomcat system. And uh, so if you have a Tomcat environment, you can deploy this ICA there and run it there. Um, or you can deploy it on a SAP PI system 7.5 and above. Um, there you need, we'll, we'll need an SCA file and it will be deployed on one of your, your systems. Um, but that is a little more complicated and that's why I prefer using the, the other approach with the standalone application. So once you get to that phase, then let's call support, or write to support and we'll help you set it, set it up. So to get the standalone uh, file, you also get this from, from the set, uh, learn file that you get when you sign up for it. And then you simply just Download the, the jar, um, run it with the Java command, and you can use the port uh, to specify which port it should be listening on. And the, or, and you can create a bat file, and then once the, the system's up and running, you can access it via this link. Let me just see if I got it here. So right now on my local PC, I have uh, a folder here, DOT running. So I'll just go into this. Actually, I'll take it from here. So I got a bad file here. That'll start up. That's just running this command. And if we just go into edit mode, we can see it's just doing this. Most of the time, it's probably better just to put. Because if, if the Java is not uh, Java 8 or anything like that, it may point what what's the reason, what are the errors. Let's save this. And then we can see the system has started up and now we can access it on our local host um, to, to fetch the information there. Um, let me see if I got it. Um, then you will be able to find uh, log information in the users your user um, that is where it's uh, so we got the ERT database so here we have our <coughs> <coughs> here we have the, the database that it's using and we got a list of all the different log files that we have so we can see more detail and if you want have any issues with it this would be the best place to find the log information what's happening so I can go back here go to my local host slash IRT um, is important and we can see here nothing has been configured do configuration um, so we want to add our PI system to this one that's the next phase I think so now we have the server running um, so yeah if you've got other uh, want uh, to use it, any of the other deployment options uh, write to support and we'll help you set this up and once we get a bit more comfortable doing that then we will also be, be able to to s provide you with guides for this this also works if you want to do uh, 
use any other databases that we support instead of uh, the built-in H2 database. So how does configuration of the ERT application work? Um, so the, the main feature that we have is uh, connecting with the agents and fetching data from it. Um, so one of the things that, that we had some, some challenges with, so um, when PI is sending messages and it's being saved uh, in on the, the for instance, the productive system where you're doing your recording or your test system where you are testing the, the flows, then the message will be saved in either a DMS queue or a web service queue. And both of these is, uh, it's two different approaches for fetching the message. The, the most optimal way is DMS because then the test application is just listening for any messages. When there's a message, it will pull it and start uh, processing with that. If, if you, for some reason, does not are not able to get the DMS working, the HTTP would enable you to do polling every five uh, minutes. Uh, and you also got a manual option of saying, okay, look for new files and check if there's anything else. Um, but this is the communication for downloading the messages from the agent system. Then we got our agent configuration, and let's just go into our system instead. Let's see, um, so I guess let's just take this one. So on an agent, we have this is uh, virtual, and virtual is like yeah, we're not going to use it. It's just there. So if you have done a migration from web method system or anything like that when, that we have not connected to then you can use as, as virtual and if you do not want to collect any test data from it anymore um, it's a good thing to have it because then you know where the data is coming from and you do have mappings and, and that kind of options then you got the default test system and this is the system that's being used for um, for information about objects that has not yet been been mapped, um, or so when you are downloading test case, all tests will be mapped to this one, and then if you want to run tests on other system, it'll be mapped from the default test system to the test system that you specify. And then we got some an option here about uh, receive messages on unclaimed objects. So this is part of the change tracking tool that also will be provided. Uh, in, in future releases of this. Um, let's see here. Okay, so let's check here. So here we have our test configuration. So we'll just say add new uh, TPO. I don't have the system right now. Test, test, test. And we want to specify the port. <coughs> <clears throat> so the way you are finding the DMS port is to go to your PI system, go into the system administration, uh, system information, and then you on the instance here you would find this P4 port. Uh, so this is going to be your And we enable web service and we can enable email integration if we want to send messages about what has been tested and what are the result of it they'll be sent with this from and to email let's just try this so now we have created a new agent that doesn't really work so it's just giving us an error so that's okay um, if we have one system that works we can test our test configuration here it will then try all the different things that it needs to do it will do directory access it will uh, create the DMS factory it will try send a message and connecting to it and uh, yeah this is one of the features that we're just missing that this will be in shortly that allow you to see if we are able to so we can send the message and then we want to do asynchronous testing that we can fetch the message through DMS uh, on the test system 
And if all of these turn green, you are good to go and you can start using the application. Uh, system mapping uh, or scenario mapping. This is if you have uh, in in most uh, systems there's a difference between the, what the systems named are named in Q and and P and and development. So this is a way that enables you to to get around this and be able to to automatically translate between the different system information. Um, so it's able to translate between party and system and interface and namespaces. Um, you got an option for uh, CSV or HTML when you're dealing with this. Um, the, the format is that you must always have either two of these, uh, one for party and component, and three if you want to have all of these. And you can use star. So let me just show you some example of this. So we got, if we want to do party and system, we can translate it like this. If we know that all our business system is called uh, P and T, we can translate it like this. But since we're not using parties, they should just be blank there. And then we have interfaces that we can add. Uh, also that will translate between, oh, yeah. the. the Mm, it doesn't make sense here, I guess. We should also be translating the interface names here um, if you have some interfaces that change between uh, different systems. And that could be a good case for a migration when you're translating between that. So let's see if that is... Okay, so let me just show you this. So we'll just create a new test configuration. No. TPO. It's a virtual one. Oh, so it already exists. So it knew it existed, but we do not have the refresh yet. So we can see we got TPO here. Um, then in our scenario mapping, we can edit this. We can add row, we can add columns. Um, so here we will then use DPO, and here we'll use TPO. And then let's just take these two examples. So we'll use T and P. <coughs> and we can save it. Only come one. Uh, oh. Yes, the map this one. So now we have our mapping. We can also download it as a CSV file, open it in Excel and do more modification of, of these values here, and, and then we can upload it again uh, using this uh, load functionality. <laughs> then we get some of the other options that we have for the configuration. That's not that important. Uh, we get license, um, so you can request a trial license, and then you can just upload it to the license tab. So let's just check that one. So in the license tab, we have it here. We would then get a file, and then we'll just say load and save it. <coughs> On this, we can see when the license end. We can see how many test objects that we have compared to and how many messages that we have and then which systems we're able to test with. And then we got the clustering capabilities. And this is if you have multiple different instances running on the same system, they can connect to each other and share load uh, between the different nodes, which is really useful if you are yeah having a high volume load and stuff like that, then you can start up multiple nodes that would then do processing of test cases and stuff like that. Um, so the easiest way is just to start up a bunch of uh, systems with uh, different ports. And then I think it would actually just work because they would all be on the same host. Um, 
if you want to distribute the user load, you can also put a dispatcher in front of it. But I think in most cases, users interaction is, is rather slim. So it's more the, the comparison that, that costs some, some, uh, some performance. Um, so it's using Hazelcast to, to orchestrate the load between the different instances. And then we've got general information. We have some different cron jobs that we are running. Um, that you can set up uh, if you want to do a specific uh, templates or if you have templates and want to run them at a specific time at night, you can specify it like here. So this will run every hour at the 14th minute. That's probably not ideal. Um, so if you end it, it will probably see at two o'clock in the morning. Um, and then there will probably be some more features in here that you can configure uh, about what's going on. So that was all I wanted to, to share with you in, in this uh, video about what uh, options that you have for doing uh, integration and configuration of the ERT tool. Thanks for watching.